Questi sono i demoni educati. Entrano sen senza che tu te ne accorgi. Bussano la porta, sono cortesi, no, va bene, va avanti. E poi alla fine comandano loro nel tuo anima. Imagine hearing something from Pope Francis that makes you question what's coming in 2024. It's not a typical message you'd expect. What could be so unsettling about it? What impact will this revelation have on our lives? It's a question that might leave you curious, concerned, or even slightly scared. In this video, we'll dive into what Pope Francis just revealed about 2024 and explore the potential consequences of this shocking announcement. Are you ready to uncover the truth? In Christianity, hell is where people who don't turn away from their sins go after they're judged by God. Some believe they go there right after they die, while others say it happens during a big final judgment. We learn about hell from the Bible, which has passages that can make it seem like a scary place. Today, most theologians think of hell as what happens when you refuse to be close to God and reject His fairness and kindness. It's like the result of that choice. Does Pope Francis believe in hell? The Pope has indeed talked about hell in ways that show he believes in it. In 2014, he mentioned hell when calling on the Mafia to change their ways. In 2016, he said that if people don't open their hearts to Christ, they might end up in hell. That same year, he called hell the truth and said it's like being far away from the Lord forever. One time in 2015, a girl asked the Pope a tough question. If God forgives everyone, why does hell exist? The Pope thought it was a good question. He talked about a proud angel who wanted to be like God and didn't want God's forgiveness. This is what the Pope called hell. It's like saying to God, I don't need your love, I'll take care of myself. Hell is when we choose to be far from God because we don't want His love. It's not that God sends us there, we decide to go there. Hell is when we say no to God's love and choose to be alone. Most theologians today agree with the Pope. Hell isn't about fire and scary stuff, but our choice. It's about us saying no to God and love. If we believe in having the freedom to choose, we must believe in hell. When we shut our hearts and push love away, we're actually picking hell for ourselves. Hell is like being without love, without friends, and without connection. God didn't make hell. We made it by our choices. Controversy over the false statement. Some critics have accused Pope Francis of denying the existence of hell based on certain statements he made. But when looked closely, the story came out to be a bit different. While the Pope's remarks may challenge traditional interpretations, they should not be seen as a complete rejection of the concept. So, one statement that stirred controversy was an interview the Pope had with Italian journalist Eugenio Scalfari in 2013. Scalfari, a 93-year-old co-founder and former editor of an Italian daily called La Repubblica, claimed in a March 28th story that the Pope told him, Hell does not exist. Well, it was proved that this interview was a paraphrased account, not a direct quote. In this interview, Scalfari reported that Pope Francis had said, There is no hell, and condemned souls disappear. However, the Vatican clarified that the literal words pronounced by the Pope are not quoted, and that no quotation of the article should be considered as a faithful transcription of the words of the Holy Father. Mr. Scalfari himself agreed with this clarification, stating, They are perfectly right. He acknowledged that these interactions were not formal interviews, but more like casual conversations. He admitted that he didn't take notes and described them as chats. While he recalled the Pope saying hell did not exist, he also admitted, I can also make mistakes. Mr. Scalfari, being more accustomed to being interviewed than conducting interviews, acknowledged an error of omission in fully explaining the Pope's answer on another topic. In other instances, Pope Francis has always talked about God's mercy and the possibility of redemption. He has talked about how divine grace can transform people and the belief that even the gravest sinners can seek forgiveness and reconcile with God. This focus on mercy and redemption has been consistent in Pope Francis's papacy. Also, it's not the first time Scalfari has previously made sensational claims about his conversations with the Pope. He is an atheist friend with whom the Pope enjoys talking. Despite not recording or taking notes during their conversations, Scalfari presents detailed quotations of the Pope's words. While many reporters in Rome are cautious about taking Scalfari's reports at face value, they can't help but pay attention due to the sensational nature of his stories. Catholic Church and Rapture 
To understand Pope Francis's views better, let's consider them in the context of Catholic tradition. His teachings add depth to the ongoing conversation within the Church without dismissing the idea of hell. There's something called the rapture, which some Christians talk about. It's not part of Catholic teachings, but relevant to our discussion. When people think about the end of the world, they might imagine the rapture, a moment when the faithful are taken to heaven while those living in sin remain on earth during a tough time. The word rapture comes from a Latin word that means to be caught up or taken up. It's linked to a passage in the Bible in 1 Thessalonians 4.17, which talks about believers being caught up to meet the Lord. Catholics understand this differently. They believe those who are alive when Jesus comes again won't die, but will be transformed and join the saints already with Jesus. There's no secret arrival of Jesus in this teaching. St. Paul, who wrote this, says that Jesus' return will be announced loudly, with an archangel's cry and a trumpet sound. St. Paul is talking about the resurrection of the dead at Jesus' second coming. It seems that some Christians at that time were worried that people who died before Jesus' return wouldn't get to share in his triumph. St. Paul assures them that they will join the resurrected and meet the Lord. Some conspiracy theorists try to connect the rapture belief to claims of corruption and occult activities in the Catholic Church. But it's essential to know that not all Christians accept the idea of the rapture. It actually came about in the 19th century through the teachings of John Nelson Darby and gained popularity mainly in specific evangelical and fundamentalist groups. The rapture belief is held by certain Christian groups, especially those with a specific perspective. They think that believers in Jesus will suddenly go up to meet him in the air, avoiding a tough time on earth. Also, some conspiracy theorists who link the rapture to claims of dark activities within the Catholic Church say that these events are signs of the end times, including the rapture and a tough period after it. These theorists argue that secret groups and strange practices in the Vatican are hints of a hidden plan to deceive believers and get ready for a big fight between good and evil. Claims of sinister activities at the Catholic Church, accusations of dark activities within the highest echelons of the Catholic Church have circulated for some time. These allegations suggest the presence of Satanism, corruption, and occult practices within the Vatican. One claim that has gained attention revolves around a sculpture depicting Lucifer in an unused Catholic Church. Some argue that this sculpture indicates Vatican involvement in occult activities. However, it's vital to note that artistic representations within churches often have various symbolic meanings and may not necessarily imply any malicious intent. Also, attributing the actions of a few individuals to the entire Vatican hierarchy requires substantial evidence. While no institution is free from instances of individual misconduct or corruption, it's unfair and misleading to judge the entire Catholic Church based on isolated incidents or claims. Supporters of these allegations often mention testimonies from individuals like Malachi Martin and Rev. Gabriel Amerth to bolster their claims. However, it's crucial to scrutinize these testimonies and assess their reliability. Malachi Martin's Sensational Claims Malachi Martin, a former priest, talked about Satanism in the Church but didn't have clear proof, and many people, including Catholics, questioned his claims. Rev. Gabriel Amorth, who did exorcisms, said he believed in demonic possessions, but his experiences were personal and couldn't prove that the whole Catholic Church is corrupted. In big organizations, there can be bad behavior by some individuals, but that doesn't mean the entire group is to blame. To wrap up our discussion about Pope Francis, hell, and claims in the Catholic Church, it's clear that talking about faith and controversy is complicated. We need to have open conversations and try to understand both sides when we're dealing with religious beliefs and conspiracy theories to find the truth. So what do you think about the revelation about 2024? Is this terrifying? Comment below your views and subscribe for more.